direct from the web, it's Billy Masters Live. And now, please welcome your host, Billy Masters. Oh my God, we're live. Can I just tell you, you know, last last show, Tuesday, I guess, um, I was sitting here complaining, feeling sorry for myself that the COVID is getting to me, that I'm in Boston and it's fall and it's freezing, that I've lost a tooth. I haven't showed you. Hold on. Can you? No, it's this side. I don't even know. Do you see the missing tooth? I'm falling apart. Last week, a tooth is gone. But you know what? I'm here and I'm in such a good mood because I was backstage with our first guest and we are sitting and we're laughing and we're talking and I didn't even want to bring you people in because I was thinking to myself, I'm having too much fun backstage. But if I'm having this much fun and if she's having that much fun, don't we owe it to all of you to have a little bit of fun? By the way, have I mentioned that I'm Billy Masters? Look right there. It's right there, there, there right there. See, Lainey, even I can't figure out what side I'm pointing to. And uh, today, somebody could put it, thank you. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, but it might as well have been April because we tried to do this show in April and uh, we had technical difficulties and one of our guests was ill and the show must go on, as we say, and we did a show, but I would just like to point something out because somebody brought this up to me last night. Lainey Kazan was one of the first people I had on this show because we had a special show with Fran Drescher and we surprised Franny with some friends. And one of the people who is on has the distinction of having played Fran Drescher's mother and aunt. She's like, and eventually she'll be Fran's sister. Um, I have spent so much time with Lainey Kazan, and I know normally I open the show with like a personal anecdote. My personal anecdote is about Lainey Kazan. Um, and every picture I find of us, we just look like we're having so much fun. Actually, in this picture, I look a little like coquettish with the tilted head. Lainey, of course, always looks like she's having a ball. Because she is. She's always having a good time. And then here we are. I don't know. Are we dancing? Are we talking? Are we just saying hello? I don't know. It looks like we're doing the hustle. And then here we are. Billy and Lainey together again. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm just bringing on one of the most beautiful people I have ever met. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. Miss Lainey Kazan. Thank you, Billy. Hi, honey. I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy that we finally are doing this because we've been talking about it since the beginning. You've had some health issues during COVID. How are you doing? I'm doing much, much better. I, I broke my leg. I broke my leg and it's been a, a, a challenge. Oh, hold on. I lost Lainey. Hold on. I lost you for a second. Sorry. You cannot lose me. I refuse to lose you. Don't ever lose me. No, nothing's going to lose you. So you broke so you broke your leg in the middle of COVID. How did that happen? Well, I was in my kitchen. There was a tile that was raised up and my heel caught on the tile. I fell and uh, the rest is history. And was then there I, anyone in the house with you? No, I, I nobody. And the, and the problem was that I, I had only fractured my leg, but then... I, I went to a Connie Stevens house for a, a COVID dinner, you know, mass mm -hmm. distancing and all that. And I was walking on her lawn and I felt something crack. Oh, and that's not the doctor right. had said to me, you can walk on it. You know, I want you to walk on it, but apply pressure. And I walked on it and I couldn't get up. They had to carry me to my car. And the next thing I knew I was in the hospital. Mm. So but I'm, I'm doing great. I don't want to, you know, dwell on it anymore. I feel good. And I'm positive that this COVID has done other special things. To, I'm closer to my family than I've ever been. Really? That's great. Yeah. And I speak to friends that I haven't spoken to in years. And, it's, and you're busy. You've been I'm really busy. busy. Yeah, I'm busy. I'm busy. You're teaching online? Is it for um, New York University? I teach. I, I teach I'm a uh, uh, an adjunct professor at UCLA. I've been mm -hmm. teaching 
there for nine years. Uh-huh. And so uh, that I did for a while. And then they, they just closed down. And oh. NYU called me. And I worked for them for a while. And the Lee Strasberg Institute. So I've been teaching quite a bit. But I haven't been uh, teaching in the last few months. No. But it's... Well, but again, the thing is, is I don't think people realize they know you as a personality. They know you as a singer. They know you as an actress, but they don't know you really studied seriously with Strasberg, with Meisner. I did. I and mean, you well, have a really strong pedigree as a really serious actor, studio kind of actress. Yeah, I, 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 um, I know I do a lot of comedy, but. I started out in college uh, acting. Actually, I started out when I was about four. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I I started in college. I was a speech and drama major at Hofstra University. I got a scholarship to Hofstra wow. where I went. And I had the greatest teachers there and the greatest education in theater and in, in everything. It was a small university at the time. In fact, it was a college. And um, and I went from there, and I started working like immediately. I was working uh, in for uh, Lee Goober. He had this the summer tents, mm-hmm. and I worked in all the summer tents going up the East Coast every pretty much t- two summers in a row. And then one summer, I got into uh, the road company of the Sound of Music, playing I what a nun. Oh my God, Lainey. A novice, a novice. <laughs> <laughs> and we should just say, while we mention Hofstra, that you had a very, very fame, who turned out to be a very famous classmate, which was Francis Ford Coppola. That's correct. And he's been amazing to me through the years. And, you know, it, we hadn't seen each other in years. And one night I was singing at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And he came backstage and he said to me, I said, Francis, how have you been? And I, I was so happy for me you'd done uh, all those great movies by then. Sure. And I said, uh, w- what's going on? He said, uh, I want you to know that you are very funny. I said, I'm funny? I was taking myself so seriously. I was mm-hmm. a no choose, you know. Yes. So I, <laughs> so he said, you're very funny. I said, I, I, I don't know about that. He said, let me send a car for you mm-hmm. and your daughter, and you'll come up to Napa, and we'll have a big Italian dinner. And I went up there, and they gave me a script to One from the Heart, which was oh sure, like my well, it was my first movie, and I had a serious role as mm-hmm. uh, Terry Gar's best friend. I just so, so was a small part, but we were on set for three months. It was probably the greatest learning experience I ever had. And he, well, the one thing that I know about Francis Ford Coppola, he's very loyal and he likes having the same people around him all the time. Exactly, exactly. He's a great, he's a great man and he's a great director and I, I wish him well. Oh, But I love the fact that he reached out to you, that he came, he saw you with the out of the blue and right. said, get her, get her in film. <laughs> Yeah, now he was great. And oh, Madeline Kahn went to college with us too. And oh, I didn't know that. There were a whole lot of people um, who were very uh, active in the, in the business of, uh, of acting and music that went to Hofstra at, my, at the time I did. You know, I want to just remind people of, um, of really where you were as a chanteuse that we, you know, because it's so... I don't think anyone, if they weren't alive, they don't understand that there were these very chic supper clubs and rooms in New York that were very intimate, like the Persian room where it was like a hundred people. It was like in someone's living room and you got up close. And, and you know, they, they spared nothing. I was I had a menu from the Persian room and I, a steak was $5. Yeah. Can you believe? I'd still oh. be there now. Right? I mean, I sat there for years, years. I lived at the Plaza Hotel. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I lived there. Well, oh, wow. I performed there three, four months a year. So they gave me a permanent suite. I had a suite, and I, I lived like a queen. I mean, I did. 
And the biggest stars in the world would perform in these rooms. Again, right. it wasn't about arenas. It was about, it. I mean, you actually were privileged to be close enough that you could touch somebody. I mean, yes. that's how close. And there's also no artifice. So you can't put on a disguise. You are exposed because they're right there. They can see right through you. Uh, you know, it was a very wonderful experience. It was like being a therapist. I would really? sit and people would be, you know, let's say at the beginning of my career, somebody would be talking, right? And I would mm -hmm. say, to them, what's the matter? And I said, Right you there? Problem? Yeah. I, I said, you have a problem? And I remember one night in Vegas, <laughs> this guy put his feet on my, de on, the, on the stage and he was like, you know, talking and i said oh, what's what's going on he says i'm having a fight with my wife <laughs> I said, oh honey what's the matter something you know and i i fixed them up i i, I actually right there that and it, it was part of it became part of my show that and i just would tell stories and and i still do I, oh you are the most things. honest person on stage because you really open up and you show who you are and I think that you know people who aren't that open you can tell I think so right I think and it took so. me a long time to get like that I just oh really yeah 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 I used to be very frightened of I never sang alone you know I was always in a cast with with uh, you know, other people, other other artists, and I was always playing a part. So all of a sudden, I had to be me. And did I know who me was? No. Yeah. How did you get to that point? A was it just because you had to? Yeah, exactly. I had to, and I had I had a lot of experiences on stage that led me to that. I didn't mm -hmm. like being somebody else. I was like, my, my daughter used to say, I have my mother, Laney, and I have my Laney Kazan. Ta -da. <laughs> right. And she would get so upset. And I tell her, you're always got your mommy. Well, I'm going to show people a little clip. Um, guys, if you're watching on Facebook, you never know. They could drop us when we show a clip. But, you know, we're going to show them anyway and, and break all the rules. So I want people to see really in the vein of the Shirley Bassies, the Edie Gourmets, the Lena Horns. That is who you were when you first burst on the scene. And here's a clip. I don't know. You'll tell me where this is from, but it's also one of my favorite songs. So take a look at this. You attack a song. You really embody a song. And that also, um, that is this old folk song that I've never heard anyone do sped up in a nightclub act. So where <laughs> did you come from? I and where do you get those songs? From. Pardon oh, me? really? Oh, yeah, I'm I wondering where did, so you don't even know how you got the song. Oh, the song, yeah. I, yeah. I always loved the song as a, as a yeah. folk song. Right. And but husband, who, who decided, let's bring it up and jazz husband, it up? My husband, Peter Daniels, was a genius musically. I mean, he was a genius in everything, but he was a musical genius. And he worked 
with me and we came up with that. He said, let's try this. And the next thing you know, I did it on the Dean Martin show. I don't think that was my performance on the Dean Martin show, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't remember that where that was. I, I, I have no recollection of doing it. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is that if you saw me, I had, if you saw my gown, they put mm -hmm. gauze over my breast, so I wouldn't have any cleavage. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, because at that time, you couldn't show up. I was so risque, you know. That was that was what happened. I, I, I kept thinking, you know, what am I gonna do? Because everybody compared me to Barbara Streisand, and it, it yeah. was because I was a, a, a her her understudy, and I all my reviews would say singer. Uh, Lainey Kazan, Barbara Streisand's understudy. It was like part of my name, and it it was infuriating me. And I I appreciated because I think she's a great artist, and I thought that you know uh, I don't mind being compared, but I want to be me. And that was yeah, you don't want my, yeah. That was I think that how I found me. Well, too. I think looking at that because we've seen early Barbara videos, we've seen early Laney videos, and I actually would put you more in the Edie Gourmet category because you, she always looked part of. Barbara-ism is all those little ticks and quirks and you're so poised and elegant and really selling a song from the heart, really exposing yourself in a way that Barbara doesn't. Well, I didn't. think that she makes the audience come to her and that's right. the interesting thing too. I try to do that because, you know, it's, it's me as an actor singing. That's what it is. Because so you're I, playing I, little parts. Uh, I become the lyric. I, I, I understood. I understand the lyrics and the song, and I, I have a whole scene that that I know only that goes with my song. Mm -hmm. And I, so and you I, have a backstory again. I you approach it as a scene, as a singing actress. So let's go back to Funny Girl because you brought it up. Um, how did you get that? You had done two Broadway shows. You had done Happiest Girl in the World and Bravo Giovanni. Very short runs. And all of a sudden, you get an audition for Funny Girl. You get cast as a Ziegfeld girl, Vera. She had a name and everything. Very, very good, Billy. You're fantastic. Hey. <laughs> you know, because I know we got to move this along. So you're Vera. And then all of a sudden, how do you become an understudy to Barbara Streisand? I got a call. I was in Canada singing at a nightclub. I had, after I opened at the living room in, in, in New York, which was a little nightclub. And I got a lot of attention. And I got a, a couple of jobs in Canada. And I was mm -hmm. singing in Canada and I hated it. I was alone. I was in a terrible hotel. And I got this call from Irvin Arthur. He was an agent that handled every singer. And he called me up and he said, listen, there's an audition for Funny Girl. Can you come down here? And I said, yes, my job ends uh, in a week, but I'm going to try and get out. And I got out because they offered me 13 weeks at the Playboy Club singing in the clubs. And I turned it down when I got the audition for Funny Girl. I don't remember what I sang, but I think it was something from fun, from Bravo Giovanni. Mm -hmm. And then I, Ray Stark brought me to his hotel suite. He sent a limousine for me with a bar in it. Hello. <laughs> I thought I died and went to heaven. I didn't know what that was. He sent it to the Whitby Apartments where I was living. A lot of young actresses live there. Right. And uh, he brought me to the, the hotel and he talked to me in his room. He had a broken leg himself he was sitting in bed. How funny is that? And he said, look, I need to uh, have find somebody who can understudy the leading lady, Barbara Streisand. He said, and I'd like to, I said, oh, you know what? I don't want to be an understudy. I don't think that I should be an understudy. It's not for me. I know what that means. He said, you have to carbon copy what yeah, the lady does. I wanted to be me. I was just discovering who I was. I thought, oh, my God. Sure. But he offered me $50 more a week, and I said, I'll take it. <laughs> so Thank you. I took the job, and it was it's a long story. It was a long, very difficult, very difficult uh, year.
Well, I know a lot of people who have been under studies, and there are two kinds of situations that I have heard. There are the people who work very closely with the star to learn what they're doing, to figure it out. and They really work together, and the star is very open to them learning what they're doing. And then there are also stars that say, I don't want to see the understudy. I don't want to know. When they have to go on, that's their problem. Right. Which way was it with Bob? I don't want her to go on. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> no. Right, you don't even need to learn it because you're never going on. They never gave me a script at first. Oh, they really? Me a, they oh, what kind of understudy doesn't even have a script? Well, they never thought she would not go on. And then about a year and three months into the production, about maybe a year into the production, Ray Stark said, I think we have to give Barbara a vacation of two weeks. So I'd like you to uh, go on stage and we'll, we'll we'll film you and we'll get some publicity. And I, I, I never heard from them again. They didn't want me to do it anymore. And Did I you ever get a rehearsal? Because most understudies no. get a put in oh, rehearsal. Yeah, I got a rehearsal every week. I worked with Oh, them. okay, because you have to. Everybody anyway. was an understudy. Sure. They were the understudy. They never worked with the real cast. But, and did the understudies for the other people, like Sidney Chaplin's understudy, did he ever go on? No. I don't think oh, because so. it was a very industrious cast. Okay. It was an incredible cast. And it, yeah, it, it, it certainly was, was. Yeah, and it was an incredible show. And uh, I, I finally got a chance to go on about a year and three months after the show opened. And I got a call on a Tuesday evening. Um, in the afternoon, actually, and saying, you, you, Barbara is very sick. You're going to have to go on tonight. So I came in. I ran into the theater. <laughs> I, oh, oh by, the, by, by the way, I had a list. I think I've told you this. I had a list you have. of a anybody who was important. I had their phone numbers. And so I, if you had met someone at a cocktail party and you say, I'm Barbara Streisand, Barbara Streisand's understate, they say, if you ever go on. Call me. Right. So I would write their name and their number. That's why I called everybody on my list and I ran to the theater. I rehearsed. I got dressed in her dressing room. And as I was ready to go on, she came in and did the show. I was devastated. So the next morning, it was newspaper headlines in New York. Show goes on, but Lainey doesn't. It ain't funny, girl. <laughs> and they were all there because of you. Right. They were there. And so I they they I, they called me back to the theater that morning and they were standing at the stage door, Ray Star. And this is the and this is a Wednesday, a two show day. Exactly. And they say to me, You're going on today, but you cannot tell a soul. <laughs> I said, could I make one phone call? And I called my mother, and she had a duplicate list. Oh, <laughs> she goodness. called everybody back. And, you know, I went on, and my career just burst onto the scene. And it was okay. rude that I was going to be fired. And that, that I, they, they didn't want me. And uh, uh, Dorothy uh, Kilgallen's column, mm -hmm. she wrote, No More Cinderella Stories for Laney. Well, let me just put that to rest as well, because you did continue as her understudy for about five weeks, just over a month. Yeah. yeah a so month. if you were going to be fired, they would have gotten rid of you. So, but here's my question. I've heard you tell this story. How, how, how does press get into a show with no notice that is sold out? Do they just get in and stand in the back? How oh, I have no idea, but they were there. Okay, so I, I want to show this clip because um, Barbara talked about this once. I'm sure she talked about it before, but she talked about it once with Rosie. And then you and I will talk about this. So here's a clip. Right. <laughs> Is it true that you never missed a performance on Broadway? I did miss one. You did? And well, I had wisdom teeth taken out, three of them. Didn't miss that one. Really? I uh, had uh, woke up with a scratch cornea, but my stepfather, who had never seen me perform, came to that performance, didn't miss that one. Right. But I think I must have had like 104 fever, total laryngitis, and missed that one. And did Lainey Kazan go on for you? Mm -hmm. Oh, because she sat here and told me she yeah. never got to go on. Oh, no, she went on. She, she went on the press. 
She did? Of course, that's Lady, isn't it? She had everyone okay. she ever met in the audience. Yeah. It was okay. It was okay. I hated missing that performance, but I had to. Yeah. So I think what's funny yeah. is she 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 makes a little laugh about how you called the press, you called everyone you know, and she's like, but that's okay, okay, I get it. What was your relationship like with her at that point? Were the daggers out or did she get it even then? Say that again. I don't understand the question. <laughs> that, that, you know, the fact that you went on for her and called the press again and got all these notices, does that create a wedge? Because oh, she's so, yes. so she, she's so, uh, you know, proud of her performance. She doesn't want to share that. Or does she now get it that, that's what you have to do. No. That's your break. She didn't get it. You know, she's a great artist, but that mm -hmm. part was her and she mm -hmm. owned it. And she it was her, her design. You know, she, she worked with two great directors and I, I think she kind of blocked it out of her head. She didn't want to know what happened with me and Rosie, that wasn't nice. No, it wasn't. <laughs> She was because Rosie knew better. She knew better, and she knew I went on. It's of course, like, she did. Yeah. So you know, the biggest Barbara Streisand fan in the world knows that Barbara missed that show. So I mean, right. we all know that. Um, were you? Uh, I want to show a picture. Um, this is a picture of you in high school. You did go to Erasmus High School with Barbara. You were a couple of years ahead of her. Right. Did you ever come into contact with each other? Did you were you doing shows no. or anything? No. So when she started making a name for herself before Funny Girl, you must have at least known, oh, that girl from school. Well, I, no, I knew of her. And, you know, my father was a huge fan of Fanny Bryce's. Huge. Oh. And so I knew everything about her. And my father was very, very funny. Very funny. He was like Abbott and Costello all rolled into one. And <laughs> to be honest with you, I had a, my sense of humor. I, I, I would be Fanny Bryce for him. I would dress like her and I put a big bow in my hair. And, you know, we would fun, have fun. And so when I heard that they were doing the part of Fanny Bryce, I actually wanted to do it. Sure. And it was like beshared that I would, uh, <laughs> it means, you know, designed right. that I would do that part. And Carol Haney, who was, I was a Carol Haney dancer. And she was to be the choreographer of Funny Girl. Originally. And, originally. And then she was fired. Um, yeah. uh, but she, I was working for her that summer in an Oldsmobile industrial show. And she said to oh. me, oh, I'm going to be the choreographer of this show with this young girl named Barbara Streisand. That's when it, it hit me. And I remembered that I think she went to Erasmus. I think I, I wasn't convinced that, that, but I just knew that I was jealous of her from the get go. Well, right. And I think we should also mention for theater people know this, that Carol Haney very famously was replaced by an understudy named Shirley MacLaine, who became a star by stepping into the role. Exactly. So it it, it is interesting. Talk about the shirt that it was meant to be. Um, I just want to show a little clip of you uh, as Fanny Bryce, which you got to, I guess on TV, what you did was like recreate a moment from the show. And I don't think a lot of people have seen this. So just to show that you do have your own style, you don't try to copy Barbara at all. You really make the song your own. And here we are. Lovers are very special people. The luckiest people. Very special person, a feeling deep in your soul says you are half now your whole. No more hunger and thirst, but first be a person who needs people.
The control is so beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful. Thank you. I studied voice for a long time. Well, you could tell um, that's a legit voice. That is a good technique. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I loved my voice teacher. His name was Joseph Scott. And he was a little guy from Baton Rouge and, you know, <laughs> and he took me on as his student because when I was in Sound and Music, I was singing legit. Richard Rogers hired me. And, uh, uh, yeah, and so I would sing with all these women, you know, all the nuns. Right. <laughs> and they would say, such a beautiful voice. Who do you study with? I say, I don't study with anybody. And he, they, so they sent me, they sent me a little girl in the show, sent me to uh, Joe. And wow. uh, I studied with him for 20 years. Well, you know, uh, I, and well, you mentioned 20 years. Let's also mention that the bands that you work with now, you have people that you have worked with for over 40 years. I, Again, talk about talk about loyalty. Oh, thank you. I've been with Eddie Cacavalli, my my drummer, incredible for 40, 40 years. And he's never bored me. He's never uh, disappointed me. He's never screwed up. Just amazing. And then I, I, um, I have my piano player who passed away recently. And oh, I didn't know that. Bob K. Yeah, he died. Oh, and it was very sad. So I've been, you know, so I've been working with a new gentleman. Well, one of the interesting things, you left Funny Girl, but you also, uh, you got the best of both worlds. You got to do the show, and you also got the guy. The associate music director was the person who ended up uh, becoming your husband and the father of your daughter. That's true. Peter Daniels. Yeah. Uh, and did... again, we talked about him. What a genius a ranger and an ear for for really interesting things that fit your voice like a glove. Oh, thank you. I loved him and I loved what he thought and played and it was like it was was meant to be too. I I I just I I could not have lived life and learned my craft without him. He was 20 years older than me. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Uh, and he knew all the songs. He was a a, a music pusher, they called him, in London. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't he work with Barbara as well? He worked with Barbara for, he was in the, in the show, and he worked right. with Barbara before that. That's how he came. Yeah, I thought so. But he left the show before any, we, 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 we had even, we dated, but it was not the way it began. He yeah. left the show and he moved to Puerto Rico because- oh. uh, he had had it. He said, I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it was a, 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 a very difficult experience. For oh, it sounds like a show. Because we had, the, everybody was fired. People were fired. And he, they hired Jerry Robbins to come in. Yeah, can you just tell the quick, quickly tell the story. So Jerome Robbins comes in to become the choreographer director. And you are already the understudy. And he wasn't so thrilled about that. Uh, no, he thought I was too attractive to play the part. <laughs> but he sent me, but when I went on that, that night, he sent me a magnum of champagne. Oh, wow. And he never said you're fired or anything like that. But he, it, it wasn't a, a, a really, you know, close relationship. <laughs> and he never helped me with my part. Right. Right. So that's the other thing is that when you did go on, you basically, well, first thing we said that um, oh, calls are coming in. That's OK. Um, that we talked about an understudy. Really, their job is to replicate what the star does. When you went on, did you feel you were doing Barbara's performance or no, were you able to bring any of your own in? I thought I was doing playing Fanny Bryce. So it was the perform. It was the characters. It was the character that inspired me. I think I did a lot of the things that were staged. You well, know, you have to. I had to because the other actors were involved. So you have you to screw them up. So, but I think I put some of myself in it as I considered Fanny Bryce to be, and I think that was the greatest learning experience of my life. You know, let me ask you before we leave, Funny Girl. Um. 
uh, our friend, I, I could say that both of our friend, Mimi Hines, did end up eventually going in and replacing Barbara. Had you stayed, was the writing on the wall that it wouldn't be passed on to you? I don't know. I had got, got uh, I, mean, I got a record contract. I was offered all these clubs across the states. I, w I was offered, you know, to play Funny Girl in Australia and to play Funny Girl here. And I didn't want to do it anymore. I just oh, I, really? a mistake, you know, and maybe it was a mistake, but, you know, I wanted to find me. And I, I, I went out on the road. My first job was at the Hungry Eye in San Francisco. Oh, it's a great club. And I came out as me, <laughs> mm -hmm. singing the House of Flowers. You know, my oh, wow. house is made of flowers. And they was were, it Lena Horn, right? I don't know. It was from a show. It was yeah, from, it's from the show House of Flowers. But they were in. There was a whole big convention, and they wore their buttons, and they sat in the, what I thought was the hippest city in the world, like you of know. Door. They were dead people, and they looked at me like I was a crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I then I went to the Mr. Kelly's, and then I went to the Plaza, the Persian Room, the Waldorf. I, 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 I was all over the world. So, so it was, again, at this point now, it's like, okay, I've done Broadway. I got the record deal, and now this is what's working. So I'm going to be the chanteuse. I'm going to be the singer. And you weren't acting at that point. No. I finally did one movie called Lady and Cement. Yeah, Lady and Cement. With Sinatra. That's Frank Sinatra. And How did that come about? I was singing at the Eden Rock with Don Rickles. Down oh, in Miami down in Miami, and I and Frank Sinatra was at the Fontainebleau, right mm. next door, and he heard that I was doing very well, and he sent a, me a missive that he would like to see me in his suite. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked to see me in his suite, and uh, I went over, but I took my manager with me. And we went to his suite, and he had me interview. He interviewed me, and he gave me the part. And then he said, "Come to my show tonight." And I said, "Mr. Sinatra, I'm singing at that time." He said, "I'll hold the show for you." So and he made an audience wait. Yeah, and I got off the wow. stage. Jizzy, Jilly Rizzo, and another like heavy, one of those guys, you know, like Meh. yeah, that you <laughs> don't ask. They came to pick me up backstage. It was like from a movie. <laughs> I, I went through the bowels of the Fountain Blue, and I went up, and I was standing at the top of the ramp to go down into the theater, and the lights came down. And you're you're going down, so they really waited till they saw you, yeah, and that and was it. Introduced me. I had never been introduced by anybody. I mean, yeah, and it's Frank. Frank Sinatra. And then, of course, I did the movie with him, and he became a friend, and I adored him. And he and was, he became a little bit more than a friend, Lainey. Well, well, I'm just saying. I'm discreet. I would, <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I'll tell people she dated Frank Sinatra. Did, and, and I read somewhere that you, even when you dated, you were never really comfortable with him. Was it because of his presence, or was it because you were unsure of yourself? A little bit of both, and also he was never alone. Oh, really? He carried a pack of people with him. Everywhere. Yeah, that's exhausting, Lainey. Nobody wants that. Yeah, it was, you don't want to be reduced, uh, seduced by a crowd. No, <laughs> but it, <laughs> it was fun. It was an extraordinary experience, and I had okay. Now I I see our next guest backstage. Yep, she's waving to me. I'm waving to her. Um, okay, so. I want to go right to, was the next time you were headed to Broadway was Seesaw, correct? Correct. Okay. So, Landy, we're going there. This is the first time we've done this, all of us. So God only knows what's going to come out. Now, here's what I know. I know that you had heard about this show and you knew that Cy Coleman was going to be writing this show. So you called Cy because you're ballsy, Landy. You call well, Cy I, and I say, 
Guy Coleman. I dated him for a long time. When I had I mean, no you dated a lot of people. You got to write a book. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. So you called somebody who you had dated, and because Lainey's smart, when she dates somebody, it ends nicely. So she yeah. never has to call them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so you call him up and you say, I want to at least audition for this show, right? So I flew out to New York. I auditioned for the show. And they now, wait, you did not fly out to New York. They flew you out to yeah. New York, correct? Correct. All right. They flew me out to uh, all the help I could get. <laughs> I put a lot of it in that space where it's like blank, I know. fuzzy. I know. But I flew out to New York and um, I started rehearsals and I was now. Um, Wait, now how you, so you auditioned and they just say, Lainey, the part is yours. Yes. And but now who are the creative team at this point? Because it does change. Garson Kanan. Okay. No, no. Garson Kanan was funny girl. Um, yeah. Okay. Michael Stewart. Okay. Lyrics. What's her name? That great songwriter. The Fields. Woman. Yeah, Dorothy Fields. Dorothy Fields. And uh, and who's uh, directing at that point? Ed Sharon. Okay, and that was a good time. That was a great time. We rehearsed, but I was already a method actress. Right. I had studied with Lee Strasberg, and I was deep and profound and there was no it was kind of like um they wanted it come on now 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 and right and I, there's a process I get there i was gonna get there and they had to trust me but they didn't know me well enough to trust me and they didn't know my work as an artist as an actress well enough to trust me so i was very slow in developing the character but it was a character. She's a dancer. And you really identified with the character. Really right. more than the music. It was the role you wanted. Exactly. Exactly. Because I knew that Anne Bancroft had done the play. I was a fan of hers. I was a fan of the piece. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, my God. This is unbelievable. I know. Um, uh, yeah. So then we went to uh, Boston. No. Boston? Detroit. No. Detroit. Detroit was the first, yeah. And yes. uh, your leading man is Ken Howard. Oh, yes. Yes. Who yes. like who who was there for you? Kind of. Kind of? All right. Okay. Yeah. Did you have any allies in the show, or were you just focusing yeah. on yourself? The cast. The cast, okay. And, and, and uh, I had an ally with, um, who owned the steakhouse? What was his name? Oh, I don't know. Lane, oh, now God. you could... You finally get some, you stumped me. Oh well, he he he, owned, he was the producer. Okay, he was the producer, and he owned this big famous steakhouse. Okay, and he, uh, oh God, I could see them now. Uh, Kasher, uh, uh, Larry Kasher. Okay. Kasher. Um, and all yeah, there was a group of people that they weren't sure about me ever. I don't think really. And so I remember. Uh, the reviews were not very good. In, in now, is Michael Bennett involved at this point? No. Okay, continue. So now I get a call from Ed, who really adored me, and he said to me, "Listen, and you know he's a he's a method director, and he's he was he no, gets it. He got it. He knew what I was doing. He he trusted me. He was on my side one hundred percent." And he took me to dinner and he said, look, I've been fired. But you are going to go on in the show. You're going to be great. I want you to know that people are coming in to be audition as the director, but I have to leave. And I know that you've depended on me and I'm going now. So we said goodbye. We said our goodbyes and. And we should tell people that this is very common. This happens with Funny Girl. Directors come and go. Right. Sometimes it shakes up the cast. Sometimes it doesn't. Continue. Okay. So uh, about a week later, I guess it was, uh, the cast got together and he, they started doing no numbers and songs and, uh, you know, you know uh, showing th this new director his name was Michael Bennett, and he was a newcomer, and this was a great opportunity for him. And sure. I 
Yeah, yeah. I think that this was like he wanted everything to be his and his. So wedding. his leading lady. He didn't want to inherit a leading lady. Exactly. At intermission one night, he fired about 15 people. I'm not kidding you. I mean, that is unheard of. I know. I, I, I really, really wanted to talk to him. I wanted to make sure I was okay and that everything mm -hmm. was all right with me. And I remember, oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, my God. It was so dramatic and terrible. I, I asked uh, his assistant, whose name escapes me, to please ask Michael if I could spend some time with him. And I actually got a message that he couldn't come because he had smoked too much weed. <laughs> this is the truth. And we should also mention, you just said that your allies were the cast. So now these are 15 people that you've bonded with leaving. Right. Okay. And um, so the next day, Ray Katz was my, my manager. And he called me on the phone, and I will never forget it. It was cold and damp and dark. And in, in Detroit, I was in this place that, you know, it was. And he said to me, Lainey, darling, they're going to let you go. And they're going to get somebody else in to play the role. I, I was devastated. Not yeah. But I had become Gittle Mosca. Right, you've done the work to get there. Uh, not only that, I I became her. I couldn't yeah. separate myself from the character. So it's not only being fired from a job, it's almost being fired from your life because yeah. you identify with the character. And he said, uh, it's, it's not your fault. You could either be a mensch and stay and let, you know, the understudy, the person who's going to take over for you, you know, who you don't know at this time who it is. I don't know who it is. And, uh, or you can leave and, and create some problems for yourself. Well, it was the worst year of my life. Then he says to me, I said, well, who are they getting? And he says, Michelle Lee. Michelle Lee. Here she the, is, uh, Michelle Lee. We'll move over. Hi, Lee. Hi, hey, Michi. Hi, Michi Poo Poo. Hi. No, I feel awful. Why? <laughs> Michi, I'm so sorry. I wanted to bring you in dramatically. It doesn't get more dramatic than this. No, Michelle. No. We so now, wait. Now, Lainey, so now, Michelle, let me just go to you for a second. You're in, are you in New York at this point? Yes. Okay, so you were in New York. Michi, slide over just so I can Where see I you, honey. Can't. Well, hello. I know. You there you go. Yeah. Thanks, then you. Then I don't know where I am. Okay, okay. so now you, I you go. I was living in New York. That's a, no, right. So you go so to you an are. audition. New York, Michelle, you were in L.A. when they called you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> all right, all right. So now how did uh, you hear about right. the... I lived in New York for years. Okay. Well, how how did you find out that there was this opening? First, let me, I just have to say one thing before we start the seesaw thing. Mm -hmm. This woman is a corva. <laughs> She's a strumpet. She slept with <laughs> everybody. I'm sure if we were closer, she'd... Me, too. <laughs> Although I never liked her that way. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I could have had Frank Sinatra. Love. <laughs> you had a no. good time, Michelle. I know all about it. Sorry, that. we're going back to Seesaw. Um, yes. You know, I, I don't often have the ability to see my friend, Lenny Kazan, speak about this with such emotion, although I will say that we've both been very emotional together because we happen to be extremely close. Yeah, okay. You're very a dear. Horrific time. And uh, I, I did her wrong, not because I got the role, but because, and we were very close. I mean, we lived down the hall from each other. We had worked with each other before. Um, 
I did something that was very immature. And I, I've, what did you do? I, I was afraid to talk to you. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's not the taking the role. It's the discussion. Yes. And I didn't have the discussion. So what happened was um, for a long time, I didn't speak to her because I didn't know what to say. I was, I had so many different kinds of feelings and what happened was there was a great divide. And, and I, I let me just interrupt for a second. And I stayed in New York, rented an apartment thinking they will discover they made a terrible mistake. <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> and by the way, let me just show. So people realize there were posters with Lainey Kazan's name on them. I mean, this was announced for New York and Lainey was going. There was a yeah. poster in our friend Mark Sendroff's apartment, who Lainey yeah. and I have both stayed in the same yeah. bed, not together. Um, but Let's so go back. I know you were asking. Yeah, Michelle, no, yeah, right. So you, now how um, did you audition and hear about any of this? I didn't audition. They offered oh. it to me. Wow. And okay. At that time, I was, well, I was known. OK. And um, as a matter of fact, and I'm only saying this because it's the truth. When I was doing a show like Bravo Giovanni, which was a musical before Seesaw. And of course, I did how to succeed before Seesaw. So people knew me, mm -hmm. uh, especially in New York, too. Especially yeah, right. New York. New York. Um, so I did an audition. I was asked to come and sit in the last row with Michael Bennett oh. and watch the performance. Let me tell you something. And she knows, she knows. She is the most consummate, wonderful, delicate, learned actress. Oh, Michelle. And performer, you know that. And performer that I've ever known. I mean, there's no way they would just let her go, you know. I think honestly, one of the reasons was uh, she, I was flat chested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a boyish dancer body. And, and this she's boy, voluptuous. And she was voluptuous. When I was doing Bravo Giovanni, she was in the show. She sang, she did everything. Probably the boys too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> The ones that you didn't do first, Mushy. Yeah. So anyway, I know I'm not telling everything, but anyway, okay. um, she was wonderful. She was oh, wonderful really? in this world. Oh, come on. How so were you sitting there wonderful? thinking, what am I going to do that she's not doing? I'm wonderful, too. Oh, okay. The best. No, but I am. Musical comedy. What can I tell you? Theater artist. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. was, um, uh, I was out of style. I wasn't in style yet. Or you were between you know what, style. Whatever it was, we both deserve the role. And we I do. I am still get a Mosca as she is. That mm -hmm. was something that hit home with both of us for different reasons. But um, let me tell you the end, if I can, of the story. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to do this. Um, so the more time I didn't speak with her, the more time it was harder not to speak with it her. It gets bigger. I course. had no idea what she was thinking and feeling about me. Probably not great because I didn't come to her and say, oh, my God, Lainey, I can't turn down the role. How, do you, how does an actor with a role like this turn it down? I and wait, I'm going to interrupt you, Michelle, because I just want to tell people. So you are rehearsing during the day with yeah. the cast, with the yeah. leading man. You yeah. leave yeah. and Lainey comes in and does yeah. the show that night. This is right. every and day. I never saw the show again because, one, I darts would have come at me just from God. But also, I, I didn't at that point want to. But let me say, Lainey. Continue. Yes. Years later. Are you emotional? Yeah. <laughs> You're so close. We are so close that this woman now is going to tell you the name she has for me, what she calls me. 
Let me call them Mishi Poo Poo. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Two <laughs> women. <laughs> Mishi Poo Poo. But anyway, who's, if there was a New Year's party at who's Yeah, that? there was. Uh, at, uh, what's her name? Lee? Grant. Grant. Lee Grant's house. Oh, okay. sorry. I know these. I haven't right. seen Lainey. We're all singing. Old and this Lane. is how many years later? Like 12? 20. Was all it right, 20. 20. Well, no, I don't know. 20? Might have been. Uh, no, 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 10. Let's say, I six, don't know. Let's, years what's the difference? 15. Okay. okay. So now she's across the room. First time you're in the same room. Pardon me? First time you're in the same room. Yes. Yeah, that we know of. Yeah. And there was a big table with a buffet with all kinds of food on it. And there were a lot of actors and people we knew. And I knew Lainey, Lainey was across that table. It was like at the my end of the, of the table. Mm -hmm. I was and at one end. How do I... God, what am I going to do, right? So everybody, see, I can start crying now, too. Everybody started singing. Oh, Lang Syne. Oh, Lang Syne. And for whatever reason, we locked eyes across the table. And we were singing with locked eyes. And oh my God. we came forward. And we held on to each other and have never left each other since then. Never, never, never. And never will. And never will. Do you know we what's know interesting? Is you, about each other. You've both said to me individually, not together, you've both said that that was one of the hardest times and one of the best times for such different reasons. That was so hard for both of you. You, Mishy, for getting the role, Lainey for leaving the role, but then you both led to different points in your career. So it had to happen the way it did, but yeah. it doesn't help a friendship. No, but now, you know, even though it was so difficult, I mean, beyond difficult, we, it's like, it's, that's evaporated in terms of Lainey and me when we look at each other. It's, we lived literally, she lived down the hall from me at the Whitby Hotel. Right. Yep. And I would take care of her cats. <laughs> right. My dog is whining. Where are you? I, hear, I hear your dog. Uh, Anna, where are you? <laughs> Talk to yourself for just a second. Anna, that's okay. Oh, oh, Lainey. Lainey, let me ask you this. What is it like when you're seeing across the room? We've heard it from Michelle's point of view. You're at this New Year's Eve party and you see her. You're thinking, that piece of crap, Michelle Lee, I hate her. What are you thinking? I didn't think that. I didn't no? think that. I thought about why. Why has life come between us as friends? And it's, it's not right. And I just looked at her and I embraced her. I mean, I just, I love this woman. I so you both her. knew that it was time to just let it go. Yes. I just knew that we had to forget it because she, she was brilliant in the show. And Did I, you see her in the show? I saw her many times. <gasps> that you didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I became very friendly with Tommy Toon. In fact, it was so it was so weird because the as in the character, I I stayed in that frame of mind with him. He was became my best friend, and um, and so I came to see him in the show, of course. And I wanted I was interested in seeing Mishy Poo Poo, and mm -hmm. she was so great. And I was. I was happy and sad at the same time. Can, is that possible? I was thrilled for her and so sad for me. Did and, she do something with the role that you couldn't have done? She did something different with the role. Yeah. I was, I think, um, more within myself. And I right. think. It was more of a razzmatazzle, you know, and I think that's what the show became. It became a, you know, it was like 
a Broadway show. And I think I kind of made it a, a, a smaller show. I don't mm -hmm. think I gave it the, the breadth and depth that it should have had. And I think Michelle uh, really, what, what are you saying? <laughs> she, I'm just going to show while she's having a stroke. No, I just, <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to, let me just I show what, yeah, I'm going to just great. show what Lane what Laney's talking about. I'm just going to show a little clip of Michi in the show. Well, it's not really in the show, but here she is doing a number from the show. Take a look at this. So great, Michelle. Let me let me talk about Michael Bennett for a second, because yeah, that please. is the reason that everything changed and people were fine. It was just so great. That was so great, Michelle. Your I'm voice <laughs> so extraordinary, and you just thrill me. And I miss you. I miss your singing. I miss you singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So Michael, Michael Bennett. Bennett. Okay. When he saw the show, he had his own vision, period. Right. He changed so many things about that show. And he did. I'm not talking about the actors playing Gittle Mosca. He did make it much better in terms of the choreography, the vision, what he invented in terms of the set, the moving, right. the skyline, and made it more um, New York in a mm -hmm. New York musical. Right. Okay. right. Um, so he had he, he, he had to have his stamp on it. That was the only way he would do it. He's not going to come into a show out of town that and is inherit someone out. else's and, show. And he, if he's going to do it, he's going to wipe out everything. Right. And my friend, Lainey Poo Poo. Oh, but you know, uh, let me just point out I don't know if either of you want to tell the story, but. Lainey, you weren't the only casualty. Do, do you know the Tommy how Tommy Toon ended up in the show? Yeah, I was very sad. That yeah, that he was there basically to show how the dance step should be done. And on the spot, Michael said, Okay, you are in, the other one's out. He and, was a friend of no, he was a friend of Michael's. Right. Michael well, that helped in to co choreograph. Right. And ultimately everything like the uh what the hell is the number with the balloons? The, uh the balloons. It's not where you stop. It's where it's you, where you finish. It, yep. That was his concept idea wow. song. It made him a star. That it was made much him. more entertaining, don't you think? It was much yeah. more entertaining. Yeah. It like is. a big musical rather than a Yeah, and I know, music. I'm sorry, because I know, Lainey, you love to entertain. <laughs> yeah, but I think the show became an entertainment vehicle, much yeah. more interesting and exciting. And when I did it, it was a small musical, very much like what Cars Line became. I think mm -hmm. that that was inspired by what he did. It was. To everybody in 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 uh, it was I'm going to say it now because he's gone and maybe Bob Avian is around. Okay, yeah, he is. I went to lunch with Michael Bennett and he asked me to be a part of the production side of a chorus line, and he told me that that chorus line was this concept he had was Ken Howard and me. Behind the scenes is is how he explained it. 
Don't ask me why I didn't do it because it's one of the things I regret for. I have. Ne I don't talk about this because it sounds. No, I know. Like you could have made that up. Yeah, I slept with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah. You might have. Um, but anyway, uh, that is true. Um, but they have a Frank. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Laney said, is it true that you slept with Frank? That no, too. It's not, but I will tell you, when I was married to Jim Ferentino, uh -huh. she yeah. knew all my men. She did. I <laughs> loved them. She loved, she loved my men. No, she Well, did. you know, Michelle, we didn't talk about that when you were on the show before, but at a certain point, you and Jimmy Ferentino are together. You're both the toast of Broadway. Yeah, we were. I mean, that was a really yeah. heady time for you, that this show catapulted you car, into a 20. different... Yeah, let me just say this real fast. Yeah. Uh, if I could remember okay, what I was saying about Jimmy Ferentino. What was I saying about him? Somebody play back what I said. I know, I can't go back. So okay. I show. See, if I, get, if I get her off track, we'll never get her back. You were talking about the fact that you, you were going to do this show for Michael Bennett, with Ken Howard, uh, and which inspired Chorus Line. Does that bring up I, memory? I I, the only reason I brought, brought the only reason I brought up Jim Ferentino was my connection with you. I and I don't remember why. Oh, oh yeah, you said that Lady loved him. Frank Sinatra. Okay. okay. Lastly, Go. I don't know if we're so over time. Oh my God. No, we're fine. We okay. got forever. Um, I was. Pardon me. As as Joan Rivers would go, <laughs> I was at Frank Sinatra's house. I either was either renting it was in L.A. renting it or whatever, and I could tell he kind of had a thing for me. You know, you feel it. Um, he had the remember originally when the phone was in a box before mm -hmm. anything, right? Yep. So he had this thing and I, everybody was all over it. And I was very nonchalant about everything Frank Sinatra and everything he owned. And I think that drove him crazy. And I so knew you weren't I impressed, it. which he liked. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Oh, that's nice. Oh my gosh. They're coming out with that. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't hanging on. Him. So I get in the car to, and I'm backing out of his driveway and all of a sudden, oh shit, McMahon. What's his name? Ed McMahon. Ed, Ed McMahon. McMahon comes running down to me and he knocks on the window and he says, Frank would like you to go to the ball game with him tomorrow. And I said, I'm going with Jim Ferentino. That was my Jim Ferentino. So I could have been a second. Frank could have rubbed up against him and everything. And that's how you got the job. I. <laughs> um, you know, you two have both really carved iconic niches in entertainment for yourselves. Uh -huh. And, you know, even though you're Broadway babies, it's all medias. You know, uh, Michelle, you became like exploded overnight. I think we talked about before in the past that Knott's Landing was like a different kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Because it's at everyone's house. Yeah. Yeah. But but Lainey, yours really, you had this whole second career by playing every single person's mother. You are like the mother of Holly. Yeah, when she was the kid's age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I, it, it, you know, it happened. I, I, I finished um, One from the Heart. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I got uh, offered Beaches. I mean, my favorite year, my favorite year. And oh, yeah, well, we got to I knew the woman. I said, I know this woman. She sat in front of my building on Avenue H and East 8th Street. And I knew her. I knew all of them. What, why is that going off? That's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it stopped, so that's okay. Yeah. And Mich uh, and Lainey, you're not oh, Jewish. Everyone always thinks you're Jewish. I am. You could play oh, Jewish. okay, but you are but no, but what oh I was thinking of Greek. That everyone always thinks you're Greek. You're Jewish. And you can yeah, play any Jewish. ethnicity. I played the Jewish woman to the hilt. And yeah. I got nominated for a Golden Globe. 
And the next thing you know, I was everyone's mother. It just happened. And I begged my agents, my managers. I just want to play a woman with a problem. A real <laughs> And you're also playing women who are older than your age. And let's show oh, a clip. Now from I've my caught up. Well, yeah, but let's show a clip from my favorite year. Hold on, let's look at this. Miss Williams, you don't know how. Oh no, hold on. Sorry, Miss She, that's you. Hold on, my favorite year. Hey. Thank you, my Benjamin, darling. How wonderful to have you to home. I gotta get back to my meatloaf, Mr. Swan. May I present my mother? Mrs. Bell May Steinberg Carroca of Brooklyn, New York, and Miami Beach, Florida, for two weeks each and every winter. Benjamin, why didn't you tell me your mother was so lovely? For me? No, for me. Mr. Swan. Alan, please. What may I call you? How about yours? <laughs> oh, Alan. On behalf of everyone here, I would like to welcome you to our humble chapeau. Two years at the Sorbonne, she still gets it wrong. Al. Ma. What? It's not Al. If I bring Capone or Jolson, then it's Al. Jolson's coming? Alan, I want you to feel perfectly free to do whatever you would normally do in your own apartment. <laughs> Something to drink before dinner? Um, some soda water. Rocky! A glass of seltzer! Take it off! Excuse me. <laughs> and you know what's extraordinary is then you get to do the Broadway musical based on the show. And Michelle and I talked about this before because she's one of the few people who has been in a musical and movie on the same subject. So the two of you true? both got to do that. She did it with How to Succeed. Oh, and right. Lainey, you did it with this, except you did in reverse order. You did the movie first and then the musical. Yeah, it was interesting. I had to make it a little bit bigger, you know. I had no. to, <laughs> yeah, I had to make it a little, a little less, uh, you know, a little more theatrical, you know. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at that same scene theatrically. Rookie, would you get the man a hanger? Joy, you should all leave. No. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Brooklyn. Welcome, thou art here to a humble chapeau. <laughs> That's a little bigger. <laughs> Oh. Just a little bigger. <laughs> a little bit. So nobody can ever say to me that you can't be big. <laughs> Where did you get that? Oh, Lainey, I'll send it to you later. Oh, I got that. God. That's um, fantastic. But that's going to be, again, you, you, after, after the seesaw debacle, to really get to say, not only now I got a Golden Globe nomination, I'm on the big screen, I'm back on Broadway. I am back on Broadway? You were. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, that. that how, many years, how many years after seesaw is that? Hmm, maybe five, six, oh, I don't know. And Michelle, were you in New York at the time of this or had you already gone to L.A.? No, you see, you keep saying that, but I was um, always <laughs> in New York. I had her in an apartment for like 15 years. In fact, yeah, we almost lived together, Lainey and me. Yeah. And we, I had an apartment in New York always. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was basically there. It was I was not bisexual, but I was by ghost. <laughs> you were by something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, Lainey, that really set you up to start playing mothers. Yeah. I want you to <laughs> <laughs> I was about that. Then when Bette Midler called <laughs> to have me play a mother, I went, holy shit. <laughs> well, okay. Since you brought it up, Lainey, here's a clip from Beaches. <laughs> What's so funny? Never mind. Leona, what's so funny? Why are you laughing? 
Tell me why you're laughing. Ma, what? Tell me. All right, I'm going to tell you. You want to know? I'm going to tell you. Why do you think I'm living down here in Florida, huh? I give up. You like the sun. I don't give a shit about the sun. I'm here because it's peaceful. That's why. You always wanted too much attention. You wanted so much attention from everybody all the time that you wore people out. You wore me out. You wore your father out. May he rest in peace by the time you were 15 years old. Oh, God. I love you, Cece. Don't. Oh, yes, I do. I love you very much. But I just, I just can't pay any more attention to you. You know what I mean? I want to. But I just can't do it. And if I were you, I wouldn't leave anybody for not paying attention to me. Because sooner or later, you're going to have to leave everybody. Do you understand me? What a great scene. Oh, ah. Uh. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Thank you. I, had a, I mean, but that really, now, is that the wor words that you're looking at? Is it the character? Is it Gary Marshall, the director? What put it, was it just everything came together? It was all everything together. And he, it was the writer's strike. So you could say anything you wanted. What? <laughs> but the writer wasn't on the set. So I made up all those lines about, you know, what are you, a, a camel? You know? <laughs> and, and I just happened to come up with all of it. I, you know, our adrenaline is so uh, uh, kind of forward. It's, it's, it's in the front of your head. And you just become the most of whatever you're trying to become. I think yeah. everybody does that. And I, I would just come out with things. And he'd say, let's just keep that. Let's do that again. And so I did it. And I, 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 I know what it was like to, to have a mother who felt you didn't see her enough. And, mm. it, you know, I, I knew that. I knew all that. My you know, mother. Michelle, you were playing mothers at this point as well. But on, on television, you were... Really, you went through, we've talked about this before, such a roller coaster with Knott's Landing and Karen. You got oh, to play everything. Yeah. What did I play? Everything. <laughs> you played everything. That was you after you slept with Sinatra. Oh. <laughs> so, no, I didn't understand what you meant. No, but that Karen went through so many phases. You no. know, you, no, didn't you watch the show? I did, but what I'm saying oh. is you, you grew. And so, again, we got to see the journey of this yeah, woman who was the moral Karen center. Was the she was yeah, the she rock. was the, and the moral center. But you get to play one character for a journey. Oh, you said you got to, oh, now I understand what you were yeah. saying. How many years did you do that, Michelle? How many years? 14. Oh. I mean, that's incredible. Yes and no. It's incredible, and I decided I wanted to do it because it gave me the opportunity to get into so many other things in our business because I started to not really write, but I, I had a production company that was very active, and I, I directed a lot of the Knott's Landings, and I directed after that, and I, 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 and I directed one movie, not the one that you're... <laughs> that you have that I saw a piece of, but yeah. And um, so I used it because I knew while I was in Knott's Landing. And had that know, power. I'd never say no. So mm -hmm. I really used it to, uh, to embellish other things in my life. But let me say this, I also yeah. got bored. Oh, did you? Uh, of, oh God, because initially when Knott's Landing started, they were self-contained. Uh, episodes. It was a beginning, middle, and end. And the actors on the show were superb. Can't get any better. Most of them um, theatrically chained, mm -hmm. trained. Um, but anyway, because I was the person that was into everybody's business, but they were telling me their problems usually, that can get a little boring. But I loved my role. As time went by, they didn't know what to It became so sudsy that I really, it was, how am I going to keep doing this? I, I, I started 
not liking the show. So last years of Knott's Landing, it was like, oh my God, is this thing ever going to end? <laughs> did, you, did you ever think about leaving? Because people leave those shows all the no. time. No, I didn't. You and were going to ride it till the end. I was, I was in every single episode. But I will tell you something. I mm -hmm. did a couple of things that I think were not smart, smart in terms Such of as. my Broadway career. What did you say? When Tyne Daly was, was uh, having trouble with her voice out of town, they called me. Me too. For, gyp for Gypsy? They called me too. Who? F everybody. I just signed a contract for a show called Teddy Z. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. And I, uh, Arthur Lawrence got on the phone and begged me to come into Florida. She was in Florida. And he because it was... And I was in Knott's Landing. So that was one. I could have chosen maybe. I don't even remember. At that time, maybe I could have gotten out. But I don't know. By the time I made up my mind that I wanted to do it and I was going to get out of my contract, she got great reviews in Florida and they kept her. I will tell you. And I don't know, Lainey, whether you ever played the role. But for me, yes, Tom Daly was the number one best of them all. And I'll tell you, you talk about an actor who is, did you play it? No, an actor who is an actor who mm -hmm. really has studied, knowing what that character is deep within the soul, layers and layers and layers. So by the time she got, and she couldn't really sing, right. Lainey sing i could sing right but he couldn't really sing but you know didn't matter she was Her an actress character it really didn't matter i think as long as she has she understands meter and can get the notes somehow but when she did rose's turn i cried i thought it was so goddamn special because that that show the writing of this show is Beyond. That's why that that musical will go on forever. It'll never be out of date. It's the greatest. Right. It's the greatest because, musical. Right? She was brilliant. I played the part I at, at Westbury Long Island and in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. And it was and in Texas. I played it three times. And I it was the most thrilling part I ever played. Yeah, it was so well, it's the best written, the best role ever. And yeah. I remember having the Weislers come down to Texas to see me play it. And they didn't choose me. They they wanted. Oh, who was on um, the doctor show the, in Vietnam or something? What was her name? Dana Delaney. No, I can't remember, but they, somebody I just, will tell us. Yeah, they kept me ho holding on. I was going to do it originally because Arthur Lawrence called me, and then I got another call that she was leaving the show before. Oh, they, when Linda went in. When Linda went in, yeah, and Linda that's right. And they called me, and then they decided against it. So you know I, what? I, and Michelle, what else did you miss out on on Broadway? Were there I other did, times? Two or three you? other Broadway shows. Yeah. Uh, oh God! Because the TV show does take really? up your life. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, God, I wish it promises, promises. Mm -hmm. um, God, even Cactus Flower on on film, right? The film version. Yeah. Um, Lainey, now I found a poster, and I don't know anything about this show, but I found a poster that, uh, with your name on it for the women with this amazing cast. I can't even see with um with Rhonda Fleming who just died, and Dorothy Loud, and Myrna Loy, Alexis Smith, and you. Did you uh, did that ever happen? Mm, not so with me. Um, it was a horror after seesaw. Yeah, who called me because Tammy Grimes had some problems in the show. She was originally in the show. And what role? I, what role in the women? Crystal. Crystal. Okay. Yeah. And um, they called me up and asked me if I would replace her. I went down to um, oh um, Philadelphia, I guess, and I joined the show. And Morton DeCosta was the director. And I had just come off of that seesaw debacle. <laughs> and I, I was 
so vulnerable and so uh, it was unreal. And uh, he he had me in the bathtub of this uh, of this theater as a blonde, and I didn't feel comfortable. It, it was at, it was I didn't know how to go there. I just at the moment I was just lost. And he, uh, what's who wrote it? What's her name? Uh, Claire Booth Luce. Yeah, Claire Booth Luce came in to see the show. She said, "I want a brunette." A brunette. So I said, "Okay, I, I'll, I'll do it." As a uh, no, I want a blonde. Oh, that was what happened. I want a blonde. I put a blonde wig on. Anyway, the whole thing just ended in sadness, and 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 I left the show. Would have been a great show for you. Because that, that cast sounds great. Well, I think I can see Alexis that. Smith was spec spectacular. Yeah. And I mean, they were all wonderful to me. Uh, Myrna Loy wrote me the most gorgeous letter that I still have. And, uh, you know, about leaving the show. And, and it was just a, a difficult, the whole episode of Seesaw and the Women seems to be one whole blur. In my head, and I. You know what's what's interesting is that you've had both of you have had these long careers, and people don't realize that there are these ups and downs. Michelle, did you ever have like a show where it was just torture to do that you had to get out, or the show closed? Did you go through this? Well, when I first got my, when I got my first Broadway show, uh, I didn't have the skills that Lainey has today. I didn't have Oh, well, you were two years old. Yeah, I was. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, also, I never wanted to be an actress. I wanted really? to be a singer. And I wanted to be an entertainer. Okay. And I think I do probably my best acting, singing. Okay. Anyway, uh, being on the stage, and uh, this is Bravo Giovanni, where mm -hmm. I, it was great. You were great uh, in it. You were oh perfect. Um, it was, it, I was watching other people because I needed, I I would, I would just watch people. Oh, how do they act? Let me Oh, see. really? You're learning oh, on the scene. No, really, really. And when I was singing anything from that show, I was fine but a little too fine, I think, because of my background. I started singing with the band when I was 16. My background, I sang out to that theater, the audience, instead of singing it about my character. <laughs> it was right. like, but I, but people got it. No, but I like, I'm all, I've, uh, I'm all I've got, the song, I'm all I've got. I was singing it to, I'm all I've got. No matter what, you cannot entertain me. I entertain me. Where did that come from? Da 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 da. da. <laughs> You'll never change me. I'm seeing it to the audience. Right. Um, but they bought it. it. Was like that was the thing. Michelle Lee, the holds that stage. I had enough of me. More about me for a second. Yes, please. Uh, I had great stage presence. Always have. I have, I'm not afraid of the audience and I'm there. This one, Lainey captures the, uh, we have something very similar though. We're real people, as you can see. We're real people on and off the stage. Lainey and I uh, very recently were on the phone together and we we're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about, we were laughing. We're real people, so we're talking about all kinds of things that don't sound like two divas that we obviously are. <laughs> and we're laughing and laughing, and Lainey says to me, <laughs> we got to take this on the road. So yes. I've got to tell you. I mean, we could sit there, tell stories about the business, me with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> and Lainey with James Farentino. <laughs> I always Thank you. No, that. I would never do that. <laughs> when I met Michelle, she was involved with James Farantino. Oh, wow. I'll tell you one more story about that living down this, the hallway. Yeah. So Jim and I were kind of intimate. I was of the age. Okay. And I knew how to protect myself. So uh, 
my mother was coming to town and Jim would stay over often. And so unfortunately I had some things in my drawers that I forgot to take out. <laughs> I ran most of them over to Laney's. <laughs> I got it, I did it. And my mother comes and she goes into one of the drawers and she says, Isn't this a, a man's shirt? Mm -hmm. well, how did that get there? It's the laundry. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, we were, those were the days we were. You know, you, talk, you talked about, Michelle, that when you were on Knots Landing, you then started branching out and doing other productions on your own. Which yeah. was, which was first? Was it, was, um, was the Dottie West or Scandalous Me? Which one was first? Do you know what? There's got, I, it goes, Dottie West. Oh, scandals me. I don't know. I, I, wanna, Dottie, I, know I told done. you, I yeah, told I've you this before is that I, um, and I've told this story before, but I found a visual. Um, I saw Michelle's TV movie on Dottie West, the Dottie West story, which was great. And I went online and I bought two CDs and I, um, so, and Michelle Dottie did West not was listen. Film. Right, but I bought the CD of the soundtrack. Oh, okay. Because oh, Michelle yeah. recorded yeah. all the songs. It's yes, a great I CD. Did. You can't get it now, but it's a great yeah. CD. Oh, yeah. And so, you know me oh, well. well. I was right. to see it. I never saw it. Oh, it's oh, great. I but anyway, but if she does say so herself. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I go to Michelle's website and it says that I can buy the CD, but it doesn't say a shipping amount. So I send a check for like $10 extra to buy these two CDs. I get back the two CDs and this check that oh, I blurred out. That's my signature. $3 and 12 cents back to me. And I, and it says oh. overpay body wet. <laughs> And oh my I, God. I love that you so, <laughs> so I just want people to know that if Michelle Lee's bank statements are off by twelve dollars three dollars and twelve cents, <laughs> it's because I never cash the check. Because why am I gonna oh cash my. a check from Michelle Lee? So sweet. Oh my god. But anyway, here she is as Dottie West. So let's show a little clip since Laney never saw it. Let's talk Be right there. Last time I saw him, last time I saw my honey, last time I saw him, he was looking fine and as he went and find him, don't cry, I'm coming back to rain or shine. Michelle. Uh, you wore Dottie West for me. So fabulous. Thank you. So fabulous. Thank and again, singing, singing country. Very I mean, good. you guys can do everything. Yeah. And I had her singers. I had and her, her band, band, didn't you? Pardon me? And her band, right? Or a lot of people. Yes. From the yes. Band. Yes. And one of the people, oh God, I'm going to forget names. Forget it for now. I know. I know. And, Oh God! Oh come! Oh my God! Kipnis, um, Joe. Oh Kipnis. yes, Joe Pickness. Up. That's who I was thinking of. That's why I just got it. There you go. You're telepathically connected. Joe Kipnis. He owned a he the other one. Restaurant. We couldn't remember. He was arrested restaurant. for assault and battery while we were in Seesaw. He was arrested <laughs> for assault and battery. Not while I was in season. No, right before no, Lainey was busy with Frank Sinatra. No, I wasn't. No, yeah. no. But Michelle, but Lainey, yeah. what you were busy with was 
Lust in the dust. Now look at Blaney <laughs> there with the t Laney's the one on the left, in case you're not. <laughs> Laney, what was it like working with Divine? Playing Divine. Fantastic. Just fantastic. First and foremost, I I have to tell you that I read the script and I Tab Hunter called me one night. I was up in my house and I was living in as he does, puff puff. <laughs> oh my god, he said to me, Listen, I want to meet with you. I said, Tab Hunter calling me? <laughs> I didn't understand it. So we had lunch and he gave me the script. I went home and I read it and I fell. I was hysterical. I said, this is the funniest thing I've ever read. My agent said, don't you dare do this. This is an obscene. And then I remember having <laughs> a, 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 a dinner with my family and putting on some tapes that they had given me, that uh, Tab had given me. And it oh, was, um, I didn't understand who Divine was. And I, <laughs> I, I put the tape on and he's eating poop. Yeah. <laughs> and my mother got up from the, the living room and she said, that is disgraceful. And I, <laughs> I, I never discussed anything with her. I never told her I was doing the movie. I, I just went and did this movie and he was so interesting. He was such a crazy dame. And as yeah. a man, he was so reserved and conservative. And, and quiet, was, they say. Pardon me? And they say he was very quiet. He was extreme. He would. He had narcolepsy, and he would fall asleep during his makeup session in the mornings. He would be sleeping in his chair, but then when he'd get on his wig and his makeup and his eyelashes, he had a fight with me in this bar, and we were fighting. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, "Listen," he said, "Don't ruffle these feathers because beyond behind this behind these skirts is a rod of steel." <laughs> well, I want to show a little clip of Laney in Lust in the Dust. Laney, here you are, and this is not the fight, but I just love this so much. Here's Laney. If you'd like to freshen up before you leave, we've got the only shower west of the Mississippi out back. Might be nice. Margarita? The customers call me Margarita. The territory calls me Margarita. But my real close friends, they call me Miss Ventura. Miss Ventura? I need a job real bad. Well, Las Cruces ain't too far. Are you uh, ready for that shower? Hmm? It took me four days to get here, and I ain't going nowhere until you've heard me sing. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> yeah, player! This is a little song written for me by a very dear friend of mine. It's a story Try all Try to about... sing it, honey, before any more of us dies. <laughs> <laughs> First off, you are so gorgeous. You're so gorgeous, and you're so funny. Sexy. And sexy, right. And body. You know, yeah. not, not many people can be body. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love body. I'm did you ever, did you ever do, do uh, Lainey, did you ever do Man of La Mancha? Were you ever sure Aldonza? Because you'd be Howard, a hell of an Aldonza. I did it with well, Howard Keel. And oh, wow. uh, he would die. I would be singing Dulcinea, Dulcinea, so delicately, and he'd be dying and he'd go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So I said to him one day, Howard, could you die a little softer? <laughs> I never spoke to me again. Oh my God. Oh. Never spoke to me again. I love now, it. Now, Mishy, you've yes. played body women as well. And the other yes, clip I that have. we had, mm -hmm. one of my favorite, and I've shown this clip before, but uh, you did the Jacqueline Suzanne story. And what's right. interesting, you did it for television the year before Bette Midler did it. And yeah. her version let's say it wasn't very successful. And many of the reviews said it's already been done to perfection. Oh, and so oh. I would like to show Michelle Lee as Jackie Suzanne. I don't know. Miss Williams, you don't know how thrilled I am that you like the Josephine manuscript. There are 6 million poodle owners in the United States alone and every one of them will buy this book. 
I would like to represent your book. You know all the top publishers say to spit at surf have poodles. <laughs> I'll ask. Get this book published and I know I can sell it. <sighs> Come in, Harper. Um, uh, we're just starting. I won't interrupt. I just thought I'd offer tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Two saccharin, no cream. I'm sorry, there's no saccharin. Fine, get me some sugar. <sighs> Let me be honest with you, Miss Suzanne. Uh, finding a publisher for your novelty book won't be as easy Do you as, know how um, many times last year I was on radio or television? 83. I counted it from my diary. Now listen to this. What if 83 times last year I could have plugged me? You. I mean the book. All that precious airtime and I didn't use it. Uh, publishing isn't television. Why not? It should be. No. They know my face. I'm an own commodity. I sold them a product, I'll sell them me. You. I mean the book. I I'm still looking for that sugar. Your girl might need a hand. That's not my girl. That's Harper Lee. Harper Lee? She wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. You see what I mean? If I wrote To Kill a Mockingbird, nobody be sending me for saccharin. What is the end again? Tell people who's in that scene, Michelle. Oh God, you know who that was? That's, she played the original. Yep. Oh, what what what's her name? Suddenly it came out of my head. From Valley of the Dolls. Yes. Parsons. Parsons. Perkins. Barbara Perkins. Perkins. Barbara right, Perkins. Barbara Perkins. And so but, I remember. But, oh, go ahead, Nishi. Go ahead. I know. I I I'm always missing now. You oh, are. You are. You to all I of know. us. No, I, there were many more real ballsy scenes yeah. in the movie. That was kind of a comical ballsy. Well, well, I didn't. I showed the scene before with you and Ethel Merman, which I love that. Oh. When she, I love you, Ethel. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah there was something they say. Uh, yeah. Well, oh. I remember, Lainey, I remember one of the first times I saw you was in concert at Pepperdine. And I was sitting across the aisle from Mishy just after the Jackie Suzanne movie had come out. Michelle Lee has the most distinctive laugh in the entire world. And Lainey's on stage saying, I hear my friend out there. <laughs> I did. I do. She's saying, you, you can hear her the minute she starts. <laughs> You've always been such a quite uh, 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 loud laughs. So we well, love distinctive. To laugh. I love to laugh, and I love to laugh. Afraid of if it's loud, if it's not loud, if it's I just go with it, and God knows we all need it now. Yeah. So yeah. laugh, everybody, like Laney and I on the. Oh, and we'll also say. Saying. Go out and vote. By the way, in case yeah. you haven't voted, Saturday get I'm out yes. and vote. I voted. I voted. Did I did too. Michelle? I got my sticker. I got my Michelle? sticker. Michelle, did you vote? Saturday. I am voting. Okay. I'm going to one of those places. What places? They're allowing people to vote at oh, the early voting. Yeah, I can do I sent mine in. I sent mine in. I was gonna vote in person, and then I got scared. Everybody so. has to vote. You must vote. I'm voting. Of course I'm voting. Are you kidding? I've been of living course. here drama as we all have our lives have been broken no it's true. just horrible um, you know Lainey I want to ask you I've never asked you this but there was a song that you were mentioned in and I'm curious does it is it something you laugh about or something that bothers you so I'm going to play the clip and you tell me fat as I am who wants to see a diva fat as I am? I get mistaken now for Lainey Kazan. How is it that I'm fat as I am? Uh, so, is that I, funny? It's funny, but it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think that okay. was I think that was before beaches. So I'm thinking to myself, how do you work with somebody? Or do you say, well, that's just that? That that's what I say. That was just that. She I, I wrote my and it wasn't her. Bruce Valanche wrote that. that, that oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um 
but she sang it, of course. She did sing it. Um, uh, what do you guys want? What do you still want to do? Lainey, let's start with you. What is a goal for you? No, well, you know, I had a, a, a very passionate goal the last eight, ten years. I've been teaching. I'm an, uh, an adjunct professor at UCLA, and I, I love teaching. I, it's, I, I have so much information in my head and so many wonderful songs I know. And it, to teach was just a joyous thing. I was teaching acting for the singer. So oh, okay. it was, but we talked about it a lot because I had asked Michelle to teach for me once or twice, but it never happened because of the faculty wouldn't let me do that. But um, I, I love that. And my goal is, oh God, now it's hard to say what my creative goals are. To, to try and write my memoir, I'm trying to write it. I'm not a writer and I have to get somebody to help me. I, I, I just don't really don't have the talent to write, but I can speak and I tell funny stories uh, because I have a way with, with, with stories. I mean, so that's a, a and, and I just don't have a desire to do anything, but what I continue to do, I'd like to play another great role. Would I'd, you like to go back to Broadway? I've been asked to go back to Broadway. I don't know if I could physically do that now. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. But I would like to uh, do something really wonderful on film. Uh, I do think the stage is probably my my home. Mm -hmm. I feel most comfortable on the stage. Most. I, I would say if you want to get to know me, come and hear me sing. Because that's where I'm most me. I'm, I'm me, all, as, all aspects of me. I don't know how you feel, Michelle. Do you feel like that too? Yes, but I've seen you and you know, I go whenever she appears anywhere, I'm there always. And the the magnificence of this woman on that stage, part of it is that you know her by the time you're through and she's funny. But one thing that got me the last time I saw you, let me keep the pot. You know, I, I I was with Rod McEwen on the Gypsy Rose Lee show in like 19... And he had written this song and he sang it on the air on the Gypsy Rose Lee show. And so I, I asked him, I said, could I have it? And that week later, I recorded it. And so I was the first person other than Rod McEwen to uh, sing that song. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I recorded it too, but I did record it also. Yeah. I, yeah, I did. But seeing you in person, enveloped in that woman, and the way you started the song. Oh God, no! I'm I'm thinking of her today for me. That woman. If you go away, mm -hmm. just give me the how you you. Oh God, I don't know if we have time. You mean the poem? We have time. No, the beginning of yeah, it. I stand at the window watching the snow melt as quickly as it falls as the freckled morning moves into the day. A hundred blank windows in the building going up across the street look back at me. My expression is as dead as theirs. And my day will be as cold and as dead as their day will be but it's the night that I fear the most. The long roller coaster night that never ends when you're alone. The dirty blue sky that doesn't give sleep a chance. And you, you crowding every room, filling up every room with things that maybe didn't even happen at all. You, a thousand miles away, yeah. as close as breathing. And so the long, slow <laughs> of learning how to live alone begins again. 
if you go away. It's just beautiful. Oh, baby doll. My Mishi Poo Poo. Oh. I wish you could have sang just a cappella then. I mean, for people to see you at this moment singing a song that probably almost every woman in the world understands when they're left alone. We've all experienced it. I've experienced it. You've experienced it. And to see it and her plea to keep him with her. It's magical. No, honey. No. I love you for saying that. Thank you. Well, you know what you both have in common is that you're authentic. You are really, you bear your souls, particularly on stage, but also on film. Um, you're real people. I never lose touch with where I came from and neither does Michelle. I never met anyone who embraces her family so much as Michelle. Mm. She is the salt of the earth and the most beautiful human being that I know. And I just really appreciate your friendship and your love and your respect. And I feel the same way about you, Michelle. I, I don't want to embarrass us, but I do feel that way. I just think you're just a wonderful person, a wonderful human being. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle is verklempt. <laughs> If you go away. <laughs> oh, thank you, my darling. Always forever. And Always. Uh, I think also people have to know you're also, I think that's what makes your humor so funny is because it's real. That authenticity isn't just in drama. It's in comedy. It's in yeah. song. It's in everything. I find life very funny. First of all, <laughs> I have to say that I do love getting up every day, except now that I have a broken leg. That's not so much fun. But when the day begins, I'm ready to go. Whatever the day has to offer, I embrace it and I grab it and I just go with it. And I have fun every day, but I have a very twisted sense of humor. <laughs> so you know, we yeah. just see the silliest, craziest, saddest things as humor, and mm -hmm. whereas well, you when have I, to, when I would find something so tragic, <laughs> it took me mm -hmm. years to get over it. Now it's like, <gasps> <laughs> well, let me just show one more clip, then we'll wrap up. Uh, a whole new audience knows Lainey through my big fat Greek wedding. And uh, I hear, I heard from uh, people close to Nia that there is talk of a third movie possibly in the works at some there point. There was. I don't know if it still is. I haven't spoken to Nia in a while. Since the pandemic, no, no, I haven't heard a word. But right. I did hear that there was going to be one before that. All right. Well, let's just show a clip, one of my favorite clips. And it show, it has... Three of my favorite people, Nia Vardalis, Lainey Kazan, and Andrea Martin in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Such a great scene. I mean, again, actors at their peak where it's like, a, it's a masterclass in comedy. Oh, it's so, Andrea Martin is a genius. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's a comic genius. I just love her. Uh, her, he, uh, she's just, she, and she's so fragile and so uh, neurotic about her work and never feels comfortable or that she did a good job or mm -hmm. it's, it's very strange because she's great. You know, I had her on the show, one of the first shows and beforehand, she's like, well, what am I going to talk about? I have nothing to talk about. And I said, your life is so interesting. Only for five minutes, Billy. And it's not so. <laughs> and now Michelle and I don't feel that. <laughs> no, no. We went to Greece together, Lainey and me. Oh, we did. We went to Greece together. And I'm going to oh, talk really? about all the. Yes. I will tell you, I was so upset <laughs> that everybody in the 
Zing Street went beelining for this bitch. I mean, <laughs> she, the Greeks, that was it. The Greeks had her. I almost said, she's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> No, we had we it had the Greek. Greek. You know, I would say it's Greek to me. <laughs> they <laughs> they to, I don't know what they're saying. Every Greek, which is a great honor and a great compliment to me, thinks I'm Greek. They well, that's what I Greek. said earlier, is that whatever you play, Italian, Jewish, Greek, <laughs> Polish, I just want to be an American woman with a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I think so, if anyone's watching this, I think they should put the two of you in a movie together. Oh, oh my God. We we wanted to do an act together. We we, we should do a show, a show together. But, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, to, to do, put it together and get it together. And, I, you know, it gets harder and harder. <laughs> with all the men you've slept with. Oh, shut up. Just them alone. You do. What we should do is say, obviously, Michelle Lee, Lainey Kazan, a little smaller. Under <laughs> okay. Talk about. What part? Pardon me? Talk about. Yeah. Frank Sinatra, this other one. I don't know who you told. I know all of her men. <laughs> and that one, this one. And they would come just to hear us talk about your sex life. Oh, thank they you. Pay, I don't they think pay that. you not to tell. The experiences we've had in life and stories yeah. you could tell that really have to do with what life is, the good, the bad, whatever, and being able to get up in the morning, because I'm like you too, I make a beeline for that coffee, first thing I do, and then I'm ready to roll. We're, we both have a kind of energy. Right. So talking about all the positive things and how we care about the world, and everything else, and then right into Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth of the matter is we still have, a, a, I do, and I know Michelle does, a, a, a really vital energy yeah. that doesn't cease. Sometimes I leave people three times my age, three times behind my age. In the dust. Me because I could oh, stay yeah. up all night. I could do a million things. I could, that my, my little physical therapist came to work out with me, you know, mm -hmm. yesterday. And I'm, and he gave me these silly, silly exercises. I, I said, I was a dancer. I did yoga for 30 years. Right. Don't give me like move your head back and forth. So I did <laughs> laugh. Can you? Pardon me? Can you? Yes, she can, yes. No. I just yes, gotta show a couple uh I gotta show a couple pictures of the two of you together. So we've got this. Oh, oh my God. I love that. Oh, God. And she put the glasses you? on. I don't oh I was that my friend our our friend Rick McKay's opening of Maybe. the documentary. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. And then of course we got this picture, which I adore. Oh, I love anything oh. with feathers. Oh, anything oh. with feathers. I've got loads of pictures too of this beauty. Yeah, and well, look, at you. look at you. And then of course, and then of course, I got this one. I Michelle uh, and I were, were we were together just before the pandemic at the Knott's Landing oh thing at the Hollywood Museum. Yeah, 40th anniversary. Yeah. You know, I uh, and of course I already showed pictures of Lainey and I. Lainey, what are we doing here? Are we dancing? What is happening? I think we're just loving each other. I think we just love each other. Well, there's a Sex lot of love in this show. This was a great show. Yeah, well, well, you know, it took a long time. And, you know, I'm glad that we finally, on the record, have all of this seesaw crap on the road. And, by the way, can I just say, we were going to have Lucy Jr. come on, Lucy Arnez, who did it on the road. And I said, look, I'm going to have my hands full with Michelle and Lane. <laughs> yeah, please. Can't you know? Yeah, and and, and, and Tommy Toon said, "I am not for technology." So. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, oh, but having the it. two of you together, I look you. You both know individually. I love you both so much because you're so. People will ask me, "What do you like?" Watch this show. This is what they're like. Oh, thank you. They're real 
people. And by the way, Lainey, we didn't mention this, but when I am at Mark Sendroff sleeping, I sleep under this picture. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Now, oh I'm, not, I'm oh not sure, but I think Frank Sinatra took that picture. Oh <laughs> and picture again. I want to see that picture again. I want to see it. <laughs> those are the beads I <laughs> Oh, do you still got those beads, Slaney? There you go. And then what I enjoy is that what Lainey then says, I'm putting out a CD. Here's one of the outtakes. So just put it on the cover. Lainey, you know, Lainey, a lot of people use wind machines. Lainey uses a hose. Just hose me down and I'm ready to go. Oh, my God, Billy. That's hilarious. God. Oh, and La oh Lainey has God. the nerve to say she regrets this. <laughs> no. I don't oh, regret it. I, don't I regret would it. hope I, not. Lainey. I believe. See, I yeah. never understood what Playboy was, and I just Playboy I, is this. That's <laughs> Playboy. But Lainey had an eight-page spread. Her left leg was on page seventy. Her right page was on seventy-eight. <laughs> Oh, Billy, oh, I have to tell you that I thought, I, I never knew that I thought it was very Rubenesque. No, well, it I, is Rubenesque. I, I was an artist and it was okay to show my body because I was a child of the 60s. So then <laughs> when I were guys in the closet with my magazine, I was hysterical and I was just uh, confounded. <laughs> So I didn't understand. And then, of course, you know, I ran Playboy Clubs for. for you know, and it all, oh, look, it all worked out for you. everything. Michelle, right. did you ever pose naked? I have no pin naked pictures of Michelle. I know. We're printed. But Jimmy Tarantino my has took a picture of like, like Lainey. But it was, I was, it was a silhouette. It was oh, yeah. against an ocean. And I think my arms were up also because somehow the arms so like that. Oh my God, Babalu! So, yeah, I mean, you look like, and you know, it's funny, Lainey. We talked, Lainey and I talked before the show, and I said when I was prepping for this and looking at pictures, rounder, skinnier, older, younger. She's so gorgeous that oh, bone stop. structure. You can't <laughs> deny it's like it should be on a Greek coin. I mean, it's so and what about weird. Lainey? You have shut up, Misha. <laughs> Jesus, you know, it's all about her and that and lots and that knots landing money. <laughs> oh, listen, Taka. We should all be so lucky, right? We should all you know? be so lucky. You know, right? You know, you both, you're legends. You're legends. And I am so glad. Look, I've got both of you in my cell phone. I could die happy. COVID, come and get me because I can call Lainey and Michelle on speed dial anytime I want, especially if I'm looking at this picture. <laughs> and in the closet. <laughs> Oh, God. I think I was in Lainey. I think I was in a different closet. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. oh, those were the days. Oh, my God. I remember I went to I went, I went <laughs> somewhere and there was a mother's march against me. The, mar the mothers were marching in the town. I think it was Vegas because a Jewish, nice Jewish girl took pictures without her clothes on. Boy, ah! God. There you go. I hope they had that up on the sign. <laughs> that was on a building. That was, no, oh my. was on a building, yeah. And now you, Lainey, you have slept in Mark Sendroff's guest room. That picture is on the wall. Do you like sleeping under your photo? I didn't see photo? that picture. I didn't see that yeah. picture. Maybe he takes it down when you're there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. We've gone over two hours, but I adore oh you both. God. We could do this forever. We will do another one again, the three of us, like in the next few months. But first off, Michelle, thank you, because yes. Michelle, Michelle did it alone with me. And can I, I've told this story privately. I've never said it on the air. So when, when Lainey was sick, I called Michelle and I said, Lainey sick and we're live and it's an hour till showtime. And she said the same thing. She's like, 
I can't do a full show. I'll give you 20 minutes. I and in 20 minutes, if I am done, I will say something like, I've got to go to another interview. But if yeah. I'm having a good time, I'll stay for 45 minutes. We stayed for an hour and a half, the two of us. <laughs> Oh, God. And Michelle, I will never, never forget my gratitude towards you for jumping in and doing that whole show. I appreciate it so much. And Lainey, you came and played with me with Fran Drescher, and you've always been there for me. And one of the first people I met in L.A. was Lainey Kazan. And she's like, she's like, I can see in your eyes you're a good person. Come along. And yeah. I've never looked back. Thank you so much, Billy. You're terrific. I you guys are great. Mm, I enjoyed this so much to you. Bravo. Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. She oh. she 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 poo -poo. Oh. I'll talk to you tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. Pillow talk. And when you call her, Michelle, when, Michelle when you're on the phone with her, look at this picture in your closet. <laughs> and then maybe put on the Body and Soul CD. That was that's on the building of the Sahara Hotel. That oh, this was? All right. That picture was on the building of the Sahara, the whole hotel. Well, now we know why they picketed. And yeah. That, now we know why they came to see me. <laughs> you know, honey, they, anything that sells tickets. You know, they saw that outside, and then they saw Namikita Pa inside. They didn't know what they were seeing. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, you two. I love you both. Thank you for doing the show. Thank you for opening up like this because you've never done this before, and I really appreciated it. We have it forever. Thank you. Thank you. Michi, I'll talk to you soon. Lainey, I'll talk to you soon. I love you both. Bye, love guys. You. Love you both. Bye-bye. And everyone, thank you for hanging with us for Billy Masters Live. We could have a great weekend. I didn't get to all your questions. Oh my God, there's so many questions, but I, I can't do everything. Oh my God. Somebody just said, I just watched again last night, 20 times. So funny. People are saying, thank you for a wonderful show. Thank you for allowing us. Wait, I got to bring them both back in. Hi, you're back. Wonderful. Thanks for allowing us the opportunity to have time, taking the time with these wonderful talents. Thank you. That's nice. You know, people are just, they're so happy to see you. They love you. Oh, and they did. See, uh, Lainey, you just said, producer was Joe Kipnis. There you go, see. That's it. And they, oh, they're like, finally, finally, people are like, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Oh, and they want to know the name of the first song that Lainey sang. Black was the hair, color black, of my lover's black hair. Black color of my true love's hair. It's on uh, my first album called yeah. Right Now. It's right now, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and they have, the last one is, oh, my goodness, gorgeous. I think that's about possibly this picture. <laughs> that's it. Okay. You know, once I've shown Lainey's areolas, you know, I think that uh, that's how you end a show is with Lainey Kazan's breasts. <laughs> Oh, wait. Sorry, I got an email from a Deborah Farentino. There's a picture of Michelle. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? All right. All right. Now I'm really letting you go. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Bye, love, you. <laughs> love you. Thank you. Love you. I love you back, honey. All right. Thank you for watching Billy Masters Live. On Tuesday, we have Broadway great Christopher Sieber for the hour. And Thursday, we've got some other people. I can't tell you who. But And if you guys stay backstage, I'll say goodbye to you when we're off. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Take care. Goodbye. And just remember, what do we always say here at Billy Masters? Well, what we usually say is look at Lainey Kazan's breasts. But what we're going to actually say now is remember, if we're here, we're live. And you know you were live today. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to my ladies when the song's done.